Hello guys, Colin here. It's come time for me to replace the Valve Complement in my Victory Kraken. Actually, this is probably long overdue, which is something that can be said about most Valve amplifiers. Valves wear with use and should be regularly rebiased and eventually replaced. Rule of thumb states that amps should be rebiased every few months and have their output valve replaced probably once a year if the amp receives regular extended use, obviously longer if the amp is used less often. Your mileage may vary, but if you do get any strange behaviours from your amp, like loss of volume, a thin sound, unusual audio artefacts for example, then stop using the amp immediately, as these things are often signs of failing valves. Continuing to use the amp while in this state can cause permanent damage so don't do it. Now people have asked, and asked, and asked for me to show the process of swapping valves so that they can do it themselves. However, this is not a process that should be attempted by just anyone. While replacing valves is easy enough and comes at no risk, rebiasing the amplifier so those new valves are working at the correct currents involves the user to probe around inside the innards of a live amplifier. The voltages present in amplifiers pose a lethal threat to untrained hands. Touching the wrong thing can and will kill you. This is a task that should only be performed by a competent person with the correct level of knowledge and experience. If you are not that person, then take your amplifier to a qualified electronics technician or amp repair specialist. When I'm not being a dashingly good looking and charming internet celebrity, I'm whiling away my hours being a dashingly good looking and charming electronics technician, so I'm qualified to undertake this task. I know what's inside here and I know what the dangers are, I know what not to touch, and I've taken the appropriate precautions in case anything goes wrong. So while I'm outlining the process in this video, I'm still putting up a big do not try this at home disclaimer. This is not a step by step tutorial, this is for interest only and if you do end up killing yourself because you ignored this warning, you've only got yourself to blame. Firstly, let your amp cool down. If you've been using the amplifier, then the valves will be hot. Wait until they're cold before attempting removal. You can use a clean cloth to handle valves. This isn't entirely necessary, but it is good practice all the same. There is some thought that the oils in your hands will seriously degrade the valves should your skin ever come in contact with the glass, but that simply isn't something worth worrying about with these kind of audio valves. While car headlamps run hot enough that oil from contact with your skin will seriously reduce their working lifetime, amplifier valves just simply don't run hot enough for this to be an issue. Before valves can be removed, any retaining devices need to be released. In the case of the Kraken, these bear trap like jaws grip into the valve base, so spreading these apart allows free access to the valve. Other retaining devices are possible, like in this orange terror. While applying steady upwards pressure, gently rock the valve in a circular motion. This allows the valve to come away with minimal stress and less chance of damaging the pins. Typically when replacing valves you only need to replace the output valves. Preamp valves have a much longer working lifetime. Some say 10 years, some say they're immortal. Either way it's probably far too long to really be worried about. But seeing as I broke one of the originals, I'm going to replace the whole lot. The preamp valves are found inside these bayonet twist locking cans which shield them from outside electromagnetic interference. These valves can be removed the same way as output valves. Choosing your new valves is an important part of the process. I've opted for these Harmer Retro valves which are designed to replicate the performance of old British made mullards which I like. Different valves give different audio characteristics, so choose carefully. I buy my valves from Watford Valves, who haven't paid me to promote them, but I'm going to do it anyway because they're a bloody good service. They supply to some of Rock's biggest names and test all their valves on proprietary testing rigs. They know what they sell and you'll only get the best from them, unlike if you buy from retailers who don't specialise in valves, where it's just a luck of what you get. When replacing output valves, it's very important to get them in matched pairs or matched quads depending on the wattage of your amplifier. Each individual valve will have different performance requirements, so to get the best out of them and the longest lifetime, you need to make sure you've got two or four that have matched performance. Again, buying from a valve specialist like Watford means you can be assured of a correctly matched set. Valves will either have a keying arrangement on their base to ensure that they can only be installed in the correct orientation or an arrangement of pins that can only be inserted one way. 
Line up the valve with its socket and gently insert the valve, again making rocking motions as you apply downwards pressure. It's very important to make sure that the valve is seated firmly in its socket as weak or intermittent connections will spell audio problems and amplifier operation. That's all the new valves in place, but the amplifier and valves haven't yet been set up to work with each other. If we want the best sound performance and lifetime, we need to bias the amplifier. Biasing sets the idle current for output valves, that is the current that flows through them when no signal is being applied. Having too low a current, or biasing cold, extends the valve lifetime but creates a thinner tone. Having too high a current, or biasing hot, gives a lovely full warm tone but significantly reduces the valve lifetime. Therefore it's important to get the bias somewhere in the middle so we get the best compromise between tone and valve lifetime. As they are used, valves drift in their requirements and can start to pull more or less current which affects both the tone and the valve lifetime and it's for this reason that amplifiers should be re-biased regularly to redress that balance. The changes in tone happen so gradually you probably won't have noticed it occurring, but after getting the amplifier biased you should hear a significant difference. Biasing for the Kraken is actually fairly simple. There are two probe points on the board and a trim pot to adjust the bias. The user manual even gives the current value to aim for. So all I need to do is probe the board with a multimeter and adjust the bias until I get the correct value on both valves. Again, to do this the amplifier is plugged into the mains, switched on and set to high output mode, which means there's up to 500 volts DC going through these components, so I'm keeping my hands well clear and using probes that are rated for 1000 volts. I'm also doing this one handed as there's a chance of surviving if electricity jumps up one arm and down my leg to ground, whereas if I got stuck in with both hands the electricity would cycle around my arms through my chest and that would spell certain death. Not all amplifiers make biasing this easy though. Some won't have convenient probe points and require specialist biasing equipment. Others don't have trim pots so you have to change fixed resistors to different values and then you've got to calculate the correct bias current for the valves in that amplifier. All things easily enough done if you have the appropriate level of knowledge, but to the uninitiated it amounts to an impossible task, and it's been rightly designed that way. Where the biasing tools are readily available, users would either mess with them, burning out their valves, or worse yet electrocute themselves to death trying to give it a go. That's not to say that some companies haven't entrusted you with the ability to do this from the outside of the amplifier. I noticed that Victory's most recent runs have external probe points and bias adjustment, and they weren't the first company to do so. There are also amplifiers like Bugera, which have incorporated an auto biasing system that constantly checks the idle current and adjusts it as necessary, extending valve lifetime and making it easy for users to swap valves without having to adjust the bias themselves. In all honesty it's not a complicated process, nor even a time consuming one, but it does require some prior knowledge and carries significant risk should you get it wrong. Having hundreds of volts surge through your body is a shite way to die, so stay safe and take your amplifier to a qualified risk taker. If you've liked this video and you want to see more content from me then you can hit the subscribe button and that will notify you of all new content as it comes out. Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff if you wish to support me further and there's other videos you might not have seen. But that's all for now guys, keep it loud and I'll see you later.